It's not going through okay. there, Jill. No, it's not going through. Yeah, I, it says it's running. Because so, it would have uh, reverb. I'm going to hit you, Okay, I'll go ahead and call to order this meeting of the Freeburg uh, Community High School Board of Education. Can we can call real? Mr. Haas? Uh, here. Mrs. Staub? Here. Mrs. Nail? Here. Mr. Henning? Here. Mr. Parrish? Here. Mrs. Morgan? Here. Mr. Gout? Ms. Stein? Here. Very good. We have a quorum. If you join me in the Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Uh, any agenda changes for this evening? There are none. Any public comments? We have no one in person. Anyone online? Doesn't look like it. Very well. Uh, uh, item five, approve the consent ad agenda. Looks like we have uh, approved the minutes uh, of August 19th, regular meeting, Board of Education approved treasurer's report. Uh, do you need each one of those separate or? Nope. Uh, um, we need a motion to, uh, to approve the consent so agenda. Moved. Mr. Parrish, uh, with the motion. Second. Uh, Ms. Second. Mrs. Nail. Uh, Second. Mr. Haas? Aye. Mrs. Staub? Aye. Mrs. Nail? Aye. Mr. Henning? Aye. Mr. Parrish? Aye. Mrs. Morgan? Aye. Mr. Gout? No. Very well. Uh, motion passes. Uh, item number six, committee reports. Uh, we had a uh, building and grounds meeting um, before this meeting where we took a tour of the second floor. Uh, kind of an update. Um, the uh, quite a bit of the rooms are painted, uh, have the final coat of painting. Uh, most of the classrooms on the south side have the grid up for the um, ceiling grid. Um, they continue to move forward at a good pace. I uh, had a meeting with Hedker on um, Wednesday. Uh, they look like they will finish the first week of November which will give us plenty of time to get in and buff and wax the floors. Um, and then I'll talk a little bit more about the furniture order uh, when we get to that. But uh, hopefully that gives us plenty of time to get furniture delivered and get it up there and with hopefully getting started as soon as we can that um, second semester. Very well, any questions for Mr. Craig? Item number seven, uh, student members uh, report, Ms. Stein. Yeah, so this past Monday kicked off homecoming week. Uh, I didn't have the weekend with all the themes for jazz subs, which everybody, it seems like, has been participating in really well, so that's fun. Uh, Monday was where from Monday to go to Target Tuesday, uh, Decade Day, Dress Your Aid. Uh, the homecoming dance is on Saturday night at 7 p.m. It's gonna be on the concrete of the athletic complex. Uh, the theme is Roaring Twenties, and the city council has been putting in many hours to make the entire homecoming week run smoothly. Um, last week, we elected the freshman city council members, and those new members are Ava Milkey, Aubrey Peterson, Camden Stacko, Kylie Sutra, and Olivia Hurst. Um, the football games, current records, two wins, two losses. They face off with Columbia at home tomorrow night for the homecoming game. Uh, there will be a ring ceremony for all players that were on the 2021 baseball state champs team uh, at halftime of this game, along with the introduction of the homecoming court. Um, the junior and senior girls powder puff game was last night, and these were very intense. Um, the championship game ended uh, being between the two senior teams. The first game I was in ran to at least 10 overtimes. At least. It was insane. <laughs> But everybody has lots of fun. I'm sore. I had this sprained ankle too, so that's not good. <laughs> uh, varsity volleyball team record for conference losses is zero, and they have four out of conference losses from tournaments. So that's really good news. Uh, they're facing off with Columbia tonight at Columbia right now. Uh, but overall, from a student's perspective, everything is really good. Uh, student sections have been packed. They've been fun. Everybody wants to come out to them. Everybody's participating in everything. So, this 
week's crazy for homecoming. So everybody's excited. It's gonna be crazy. Very nice. Any questions for Miss Sun? And who won? The green team or the purple team? The green team. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> Very good, item number eight, principal report. Okay, so I have a couple things here for you today. Uh, we'll start with some student news. Congratulations to Freeburg High School senior Allison Colvis. Allison was recognized as a committed student in the 2022 National Merit Scholarship Program. Although Allison will not continue in the 2022 competitional for National Merit Scholarship Award, Committed students do place among the top 50,000 students in the U.S. who entered the 22 competition. And she did this by um, taking the 2020 preliminary SAT National Merit Scholarship Qualifying Test. Qualifying Test, also known as the PSAT NMSQT. So congratulations to Allison, that was just outstanding. Um, secondly, congratulations to Freeburg Community High School art student Riley Thompson. Riley Design was chosen from over 50 entries for the Eckerd's Corn Maze at Millstock. A copy of Riley's Design is um, not below, actually I attached to the second page, you can see. This is what she turned in. So if you're going out to the uh, Corn Maze, do not take it and cheat, okay? You've got the, what it looks like, but she just did an outstanding job doing that. We're super happy for her. And then um, Mrs. Amanda Stewart and Mrs. Tina Overby took a number of the junior senior art students out with Riley this last Friday and Eckerd's opened it for them for the day so they could go through and um, run through her maze. So pretty exciting stuff for Riley. And um, uh, her design was featured on Fox 2 News and our Fox 2 Now and also in the St. Louis Post Dispatch. Um, 2021 graduate Colin Bergerman was selected for one of 13 spots on the um, American Baseball, ABCA Rawlings All-Region Team. The American Baseball Coaches Association is the largest association in the U.S. for baseball coaches. Region 4 is Illinois, Indiana, Michigan, Tennessee, Kentucky, and Ohio. This is the highest honor a player can get in the country other than All-America. Um, this team is selected regardless of school size. So out of every baseball player in this region, Colin was uh, one of the 13 best, so super outstanding. And then Coach Kirby told me he doesn't think we've had another FCHS player named for this honor. So congratulations for Colin. Colin is attending college and playing baseball at Johnson City Community College in Kansas. For some school news, um, also along the lines of baseball, um, uh, Coach Kirby was notified that the 2020-21 baseball team uh, was being honored for the Team Academic Excellence Award by the American Baseball Coaches Association also. So, not just a state championship, but also um, academic excellence. So great news and congratulations. Johnson's was at the high school Thursday today um, for class ring presentations for all sophomores. Students can order online or bring their order to school with a $75 down payment um, next week, October 6th. If they order online, they can print out their completed order form and bring it to school. Um, and they have this really cool backpack or earbud promotion, so if they order their ring by the six, it's really cool. I get parents asking all the time where they can get that backpack, and I'm like, yep, it's only from Jostens. And um, they also give them a companion ring, so that started today. Um, I was notified today also um, by um, FGM Architects from Mike Staub um, that they are going to give a donation check to the computer-aided drafting classes towards the purchase of some new 3D printers. So, super excited about that. Um, along with all of the events of homecoming and we've got the homecoming football game, I would also like to invite people out to our home cross-country meet Saturday mornings. Um, it is our invite. They've invited over, we're expecting 30 teams. Um, the first race starts at 8.30 a.m., so if you want a parking spot with that many people, you're probably gonna wanna get there really early, but we're looking forward to that. And then on October 5th, we're gonna do the Pack the Stands night for soccer. We have an awesome fan section that's coming out to all the volleyball games, and uh, we want soccer to have a big night too, so the kids selected October 5th, and it's gonna be a blue out night, so they want all the kids to wear blue and come out and cheer for them if they um, take on West Point, so. Um, that's what we got going on. That's it. Thanks. Very good. Thank you, Ms. Jung. Any questions? 
Uh, item number nine, superintendent's report. All right, I, I've already talked about the second floor uh, construction update. Uh, second item is the IIII conference is coming up in November. Uh, we'll leave uh, in the morning on the 18th and we'll return uh, midday on the 21st. Um, if anybody's plans have changed, they need to let Kendra know before October 4th so we can get uh, uh, money back if, uh, if they're un unable to attend. Uh, the IS, our IASB, Illinois Association of School Boards, is holding a Southwest Division meeting. My understanding is it's supposed to be in person. I don't have any details. It is on October 5th. As soon as I get details, I'll send that out. And if you would let uh, uh, Kendra, I know, and that way we can get um, um, those reservations made and uh, figure out transportation. I uh, wanted to kind of update the board on a group uh, that I've been participating with. It's uh, a group of superintendents around the state uh, with the, the idea that they want to make uh, decisions local. Um, a little bit unhappy with some of the mandates that have come down and the lack of guidance and would prefer that uh, the powers that be allow the local governments to kind of manage the schools a little more than what they're managing right now. Uh, this has been a lot more prevalent with the COVID-19 issues, but it also stems back to a lot of the unfunded mandates over the last couple of years uh, that have come down that schools really haven't had a whole lot of input on. Um, I did put an, uh, a letter in the paper last week that was written by members of this group um, then uh, we also have a few other meetings. I know that a group went up to the state capitol to try to uh, make or have conversations, uh, public speaking during the ISBE Board of Education meeting. Uh, again, I'll keep attending those meetings and we'll see uh, if any kind of pressure can be put on the legislature to kind of work with uh, the uh, governor and also the uh, Illinois State Board of Education to kind of come to um, common ground. I uh, wanted to update the board a little bit on some lawsuits and TROs around the state that uh, are related to COVID. Uh, there have been two that were uh, somewhat local. Uh, recently there was one in uh, Effingham County that the judge ruled in favor of the parents that were suing the school that the, saying the school did not have a right to quarantine. Uh, then there was another one in Clinton County, actually two in Clinton County, uh, both against Carlisle High School. Uh, the first was, uh, had to do with quarantine as well. The second had to do with mask mandates. Uh, the judge actually filed a TRO, a temporary restraining order in that case, and ruled that, uh, that the, the students did not have to wear masks because it constituted a medical device or medical equipment. But the judge went further and said that because of uh, the concern of having future lawsuits that nobody at, at Carlisle High School needed to wear a mask. So, um, so I haven't spoken with anybody from Carlisle, uh, but um, those will be kind of paid attention to around the state. I know there's a few more. I heard there's one up near um, Springfield, and I, my understanding is there's supposed to be another one filed in Madison County. So. We'll kind of keep an eye on those. And uh, right now we have not had any adverse effect here at Freeburg, uh, but if there is anything, I will let you guys know. Very good. Any questions for Mr. Creighton? Item number 10, old business. Uh, we need to conduct a budget hearing. Uh, this is the uh, second part. We actually have to adjourn this meeting and go into a budget hearing uh, to allow the public to make any comments on the budget. Uh, so that's the first item that needs to happen is uh, a motion to adjourn this meeting and go to a budget hearing. So moved. Second. Ms. Staub, motions to adjourn the regular meeting and go into the budget hearing uh, seconded by Mr. Parrish. Mr. Haas? Aye. Mrs. Staub? Aye. Mrs. Nail? Aye. Mr. Henning? Aye. Mr. Parrish? Aye. Mrs. Morgan? Aye. Very well. Uh, motion passes. Uh, Regular meeting is now adjourned uh, and we are in a budget meeting. Here. So this is, if there's any comments by anybody, uh, public or on TV at this time, or on the computer at this uh, time, this would be the your, your time to ask questions or comments. So, 
seeing as uh, no one spoke up, uh, do you have any uh, anything additional you want to say on the budget? No, that's we'll, we'll come in section B. Now we need to go back into the regular. All right. Uh, need a motion to adjourn the budget hearing and return to the regular. Uh, so moved. Uh, second. Uh, Motion by Mr. Parrish, seconded by uh, Mr. Henning. Mr. Haas? Aye. Mrs. Staub? Aye. Mrs. Nail? Aye. Mr. Henning? Aye. Mr. Parrish? Aye. Mrs. Morgan? Aye. Very well, motion passes. Uh, item number B, approve the second reading and adopt the fiscal year 2022 budget. Uh, very little has changed between the first reading and the second reading. Uh, we still are looking at an increase of, in revenue of a little over $300,000 this year over last year. Uh, there is some additional expenses, but overall uh, it is a positive uh, movement on our revenue versus expenditure. Um, and uh, it's a good budget. And I want to thank Diane for all the work that she does putting this in and putting this together. Uh, there is some signature forms that, that uh, we'll need everybody to sign um, part of the budget and, and Kendra will, will get those passed around but I do ask the board to approve the second reading. Are there any questions uh, concerning the budget? Is anyone interested in uh, making a motion to approve the second reading and adopt the 2022 budget? So moved. I will. Motion by Mrs. Nail, seconded by Mr. Henning. Mr. Haas? Aye. Mrs. Staub? Aye. Mrs. Nail? Aye. Mr. Henning? Aye. Mr. Parrish? Aye. Mrs. Morgan? Aye. Mr. Gauck? Aye. Very good. Uh, motion passes the fiscal year 2022 budget is approved. Uh, item number 11, new business. Uh, the uh, Wigaman Incorporated is uh, protesting their uh, real estate taxes. Um, it looks like it went through the first uh, series of appeals and it, it was uh, turned down, so they uh, brought this back. Uh, they're looking to decrease their property assessment by uh, almost 32%. Um, I, I believe we need to um, intervene and fight this. Uh, the steps that to do this is if the board needs to pass the resolution that was in your packet uh, and then after that's done our attorneys will file the paperwork to intervene in that on our behalf in that uh, appeal are there any questions uh, concerning the, the appeal is anyone interested in making a motion to approve the resolution to intervene in property tax appeal of the Wigman property. So moved. Uh, we have a motion Second. by Mrs. Staub, seconded by uh, uh, by Dean, Mr. Gauck. Mr. Haas. Aye. Mrs. Staub. Aye. Mrs. Nail. Aye. Mr. Henning. Aye. Mr. Parrish. Aye. Mrs. Morgan. Aye. Mr. Gauck. Aye. There will motion passes. Item number B, consider furniture purchase for the second floor addition. Uh, the furniture purchase uh, for the second floor was part of the school district's responsibility to uh, put together, so it wasn't included in the uh, initial bid. The, the price or the budget for that was, uh, the budget was $200,000. Uh, as I've written to you, uh, I think that we're gonna be able to come in well under the $200,000 uh, for the furniture. I do have, um, a list of prices and the companies, the vendors that have submitted. Um, I have done a little bit of work. I will tell you that even as of today, I've received more bids or more pricing. So I do not feel like I'm in a position right now to give you exactly who we're buying what piece of furniture from. Um, I am interested in, in the board's feedback on what we've selected in general. Again, these are just general pictures, the colors may not represent exactly the color, uh, but the, the, the different pieces that we are gonna put in. Um, eventually what I would like to do is to have the board approve uh, me to purchase furniture up to a, a certain dollar value and not to go over that dollar value. Uh, I don't think it'll go over what I'm at now, but just kind of 
going through what's in the packet, we're looking for some chairs and a table to go up in the teacher's lounge. It's a pretty small lounge, so there's, we can only buy small tables. Uh, item number three is the science lab tables. Those are going to look very similar to what we have now. Um, again, one of the things I do want to point out when you look at the prices is they're not all the same manufacturer. So, you know, even though they are, you know, are supposed to have the guaranteed lowest price because of the program we're in, you know, I'm looking at a, a Chevy versus a, a Ford table. And so they're not necessarily apples to apples. So one of the things I still need to do is make sure that like the science table is the right height. I don't want to make, I don't want to buy a table that's too, too short. Uh, things like the, the desk, uh, the double pedestal desk. This is very similar to the desk that we have downstairs in the, in the teacher's uh, classrooms. But again, I want to make sure that those measurements are all correct. This is just a little bit of extra work uh, that needs to take place, plus to go through the, the other bids. Uh, the item five is the, the desk that we're going to have for the teachers. Uh, six is the stools and the science labs. Um, seven is the podium. Um, kind of looking around, I really like the idea of having a podium, podium that was on wheels. The teachers, especially, they're going to have a chance to be able to move that. It, it'll uh, uh, telescope or telescopic, so it'll go up and down for different heights. I think that's important. Uh, item eight, after I printed that out, I thought that looks like a big black blob, uh, blob but that is a steel storage cabinet. Uh, we're kind of going with the gray slash black theme. Uh, I don't know if you guys noticed, but the, each room had a accent wall, and it's kind of a charcoal color, and so that's kind of uh, found through. The, then the other thing that I'm actually, uh, I want to thank a couple of the English teachers that brought this to my attention, because I would have just gone through and bought desks like we have. They, they have kind of talked about we have some students that are just getting, you know, they're bigger and they're having a hard time getting to the desk. I know when I go in, I have a hard time sitting at the desk. So we're looking at a chair slash desk uh, um, combination so they're not connected. So the chairs that we're looking at, they look lightweight. This chair does have a 300 pound uh, limit. So the other ones we're looking at had a 250. So that I feel fairly comfortable about that. But the other thing that I'm really excited about is the tables and that's the last handout. So they called these, these shapes desks and so these are basically can be configured in a, in a bunch of different uh, 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 designs where you can collaborate and either you could have one person sit at the desk or you could have where you could have a couple people or three or four or five and I think they'll they're lightweight enough that they'll be able to move around so that's the type of furniture that I'm looking for I still need need to go through um, I think I had in here 360 desks and 360 uh, chairs well, I don't need that many because some of the classes are going to reuse some of the furniture. So I need to still work a little bit on it. Uh, but what I would like to do is, uh, unless the board has other questions, uh, have the board approve uh, the purchase of the furniture up to a dollar value. And I think I suggested here up to 125000 And so I can go through, double check all these sizes, make sure it's exactly what we need, make sure that the vendors that we're talking to have the availability. Some of the uh, uh, vendors were, were bringing in items overseas. I want to make sure there's not going to be a delay for that. So a little, little bit of legwork still to do, but I don't want to wait till October because I think if I can order it within the next week or so that I'll be able to get it in uh, by the end of December. Question. Does anybody have a problem with, uh, I mean, he's going to look after our that. best interest. And I'll save make a motion that uh, Greg up to $125,000 for the furniture needed to be purchased for the second floor. Yes, second. Motion by Mr. Parrish, and seconded by uh, Mrs. Morgan. Mr. Haas. Aye. Mrs. Staff. Aye. Mrs. Nail. Aye. Mr. Henney. Aye. Mr. Parrish. Aye. Mrs. Morgan. Aye. Mr. Gow. Aye. Very well, motion passes. Uh, item number C, consider approving the, for the purchase of electronic items for the second floor addition. So the, this again was uh, always intended to be our responsibility. Uh, these things include uh, the, the little Wi-Fi hubs, they include a lot of the connections that Mr. Alt needs, uh, but they also include uh, the projectors, or I'm sorry, 
the uh, monitors that we're going to put in the rooms. So instead of putting a Promethean board, and we had once talked about the interactive TVs, we're actually going to put a monitor in like this. There'll be an 85 inch monitor, so there'll be a fairly large monitor um, that will operate anything that the teachers can and push through on their laptops um, and their computers. Um, so when he's gone through all of these, and he, again, he went through IT Savvy is the company that he likes to work with. They are a part of TIPS, so we were able to get the TIPS pricing. Um, the cost that he is proposing is $42,653. It was a budget of $100,000, so we're coming in well under that. The only other items that we're probably, I mean, the big ticket items that we're going to look at are interactive TVs. And those are the TVs, they used to have one in here. But we've got a couple teachers. These are the larger TVs that are on carts that you can actually, they're touch screens and you can lay them down flat so you can do a lot of different things with it. I don't know if any of your teachers are using them. But the two teachers that are using them love them. So what we want to do is make those available to the teachers. They're about five or six grand a piece. Um, but we have that ESSER money that we can use to purchase those kind of, of things. And so that is going to be an expense that we'll be looking at probably probably at the October meeting. But right now, this is just to basically get the, the, the uh, second floor up to date and ready to go as far as the electronics. And your, uh, your comment in here that this was already in the construction, it's not an addition. It's Correct. actually less than what we It was budgeted at 100000 and we're coming in at about 40, a little under 43. Very well. Any additional yeah. questions? Is anyone interested in motioning, uh, making a motion for the purchase of electronic item? So moved. Uh, motion by Ms. Nail. Second. Seconded by Mr. Parrish. Mr. Haas. Aye. Mrs. Staub. Aye. Mrs. Nail. Aye. Mr. Henning. Aye. Mr. Parrish. Aye. Mrs. Morgan. Aye. Mr. Gout. Aye. A motion passes. Item D, consider approving the purchase of the new March band. Uh, Mr. Goss has been talking to me for, oh, I don't know, for a full year, but uh, a good portion of last year about buying uh, new uniforms. Uh, the last uniforms were purchased about 25 years ago. So the life, you know, the life of those uniforms have been ex expended. Um, uh, one of the things that I did want to point out is, um, the, you know, the music boosters support uh, the band program financially in a lot of ways, but they also spend a lot of their money uh, that they raise on like equipment upgrades and purchasing equipment. And this is just a, an item that I would not expect the band boosters to pay for. Um, we were actually able to go through, again, this is through the TIPS program, and we were able to use this, I'm going to say it wrong, but uh, the Moulin Brothers and Company out of Greenville, this is who Mr. Goss has uh, worked with before to purchase uniforms. There is a rendering that was sent out. I think it looks very classy. Uh, it's got our number, it's got a big F on the front. Um, and the price came in at $60,990.20. We have built that into this year's budget already. So we already have that covered, so that's not an additional expense that, that we hadn't planned to spend already. So uh, didn't know if anybody had any questions. These, I, I'm trying to remember, it, it's a, a fairly lengthy turnaround, so we're not looking at these things probably till the spring. So it, it, it takes a little bit. Fitted for and fitted they fitted. just got fitted. Yeah. yeah. So these these will be a very and they're very high quality uh, uh, uniform. So this is one of the more reputable companies. Questions? Yes, we did. Any other additions? All right, we have a motion by Mr. Henning. Second. Uh, seconded by Ms. Morgan. Mr. Haas. Aye. Mrs. Staub. Aye. Mrs. Nail. Aye. Mr. Henning. Aye. Mr. Parrish. Aye. Mrs. Morgan. Aye. Mr. Gauck. Aye. Motion passes. Item on number E, or letter E, consider approving the extracurricular photography contract. Yes, after we made the decision last year to, to part ways with Life Touch on our photography, uh, we are in, in need of our extracurricular photography. Uh, the school pictures and things like that are all covered by Jostens. And uh, 
which they actually don't charge us. Uh, but we have, uh, and I want to give Coach Lar uh, the credit for this. He has reached out to conference schools on who they use for photography. He got uh, several different names. Uh, the name that kept coming up the most was Humphrey Photography out of Nashville. Uh, the schools that use them are very happy about it. Uh, the contract that they have proposed is basically $500 for each season. Uh, so one for spring, one for winter, and one for fall. So we have two seasons left. Uh, they would start in basketball season, so it would be $1,000 for this year. Then next year, if we uh, re-up uh, it, it'd be $1,500. So uh, that's quite a bit of savings over what we had before. And again, they, they will cover uh, each extracurricular activity. They will also uh, show up to, uh, they'll do all the team pictures, uh, all the individual pictures, and then they'll show up to contests. Uh, we do have somebody on staff that's doing the uh, banners that they have on the field, and we're not going to change that. And so this is just the, the pictures that will go in the yearbook, and then they'll turn around and have the packages for the parents and the families to purchase. Any questions? Is anyone interested in making a motion to approve the extracurricular photography contract? Motion by Ms. Morgan. Second. Second by Ms. Staub. Mr. Haas? Aye. Mrs. Staub? Aye. Mrs. Nail? Aye. Mr. Henning? Aye. Mr. Parrish? Aye. Mrs. Morgan? Aye. Mr. Gout? Aye. Very well. Motion passes. Item F. Uh, approve the school maintenance grant application. Uh, the state of Illinois has again opened up the maintenance grants for this year. Uh, these are matching grants up to $50,000. So uh, if the district paid, or if the district had a, an expense of 100,000, they would pay half. Uh, but they'll only pay up to $50,000. So we kind of, uh, Dennis and I and, and Diane kind of talked through a lot of this and it seems like the, the two big items, um, and you can mix and match these, you don't have to have one particular. So, but the two big things that we really wanted to work on were the envelope of the building, um, and we felt like we needed, this was something that was brought up years ago with uh, Tremco, is that we need some tuck pointing done. Uh, and on uh, parts of the building, it's, it's a fairly substantial amount. And then the windows on the south side of the main gym, those are those very tall wooden windows. I don't know that they are original to that building, but uh, there's a lot of water damage. Um, the operation, the little blinds and stuff inside don't work. so. Um, our idea is to replace those and possibly have a, the contractor come in and build up the opening a little bit so you don't have all window and then we could have windows at the top bring up in light but then kind of keep the, the people away from the windows just fill it out and, and so that's the idea um, there's a couple items or a couple steps we have to take one is the board needs to approve the uh, maintenance grant as presented, and then we also have to talk about a health life safety application that goes along with that. Any questions? Well, I'll move to approve the school maintenance grant application as presented. Second. Second by Mr. Parrish. Mr. Haas? Aye. Mrs. Staub? Aye. Mrs. Nail? Aye. Mr. Henning? Aye. Mr. Parrish? Aye. Mrs. Morgan? Aye. Mr. Gauck? Aye. The motion passes. Item G is the approval of the health life safety application. So this item goes hand in hand with the last item. Uh, both the uh, tuck pointing and the windows are health life safety eligible items. And so in order to uh, use health life safety money to pay for that, we have to uh, uh, pass a and approve a health life safety application. So Mike Staub has already started to work on that from FGM. So these are just all the steps to, to get these uh, items put together. I do want to say that by approving these last two, the board hasn't spent any money. Uh, they'll still, I will still have to come before you and ask for you guys to approve expenditures. So you haven't, you haven't expended any money. So I forgot to say that, but I wanted to make sure that was clear. Any questions? Uh, do I have a motion to approve? I'll make the motion to approve the health and safety application. Mr. Second. Second. Second by Mrs. Morgan. Mr. Haas? Aye. Mrs. Staub? Aye. Mrs. Nail? Aye. Mr. Henning? Aye. Mr. Parrish? Aye. Mrs. Morgan? Aye. Mr. Gauck? Aye. A motion passes. Um, item number 12, any board correspondence? Uh, no. Uh, 
item 13, agenda items, and the additional agenda yeah. items. Uh, item 14, closed session. Do we have we do for personnel, uh, actually possible litigation, uh, and I believe that is it. One more. I'll make that motion. Do you want it, do you want it on, I'll second. on record what, uh, what that other addition? Oh, and possible student disciplinary. Very well. We have a motion by uh, Mr. Gaff and a, a second by who was it? Uh, Mr. Parrish. Mr. Haas. Uh, aye. Mrs. Staff. Aye. Mrs. Mayo. Aye. Mr. Henning. Aye. Mr. Parrish. Aye. Mrs. Morgan. Aye. Mr. Gauff. Aye. Very well. Motion passes. Uh, thank you for attending. Uh, we're, we're now going.